female ambassador, I think I know something about gender issues, both in theory and practice. And uh, it's, uh, it's a subject that I like very much to talk about, because it's close to my heart. And I also feel that when you are a woman in position, you have a kind of moral mission to, uh, to talk about it and promote the gender issues. Of course, when you come from a Nordic uh, country, uh, people think that uh, that uh, it is very much, uh, uh, it's a very rich society, it has a special history, and, uh, and it's, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the aspects of the Nordic model cannot be transmitted or uh, used in other countries that do not have the same story. To s some extent, I can understand that uh, argument, but there are many, many th good practices and lessons learned from the Nordic model. I, when I came to Hungary, I felt that Hungary was, uh, in a way, back in this, where Norway and Sweden were in the 60s, 60s and 70s. So, of course, uh, the situation we have today, it's a result of first hard work, political will, and the women fighting for the rights themselves. So it's not something that happened suddenly. It's a long process. It's not something that came out of the blue. And it's not something that the women were passive to themselves. It was not suddenly a gift that was given to us that we could access to the higher position. We had to fight for it, actually. And I studied in the early 70s, and that is where the mo women's movement really started to pick up. And we were wondering, why don't we have access to that and that and that? We did not uh, take the answers that we received for granted any longer. Uh, of course, the uh, gender equality is also a key factor in the Nordic society model. And why is the Nordic model seen as a model? It lies in the word model. It's firstly because there's uh, people are usually happy in the Nordic uh, countries. Of course, there are unhappy people. But if you look at the uh, U uh, UN... Uh, uh, reports on which people are the most happy happiest in the world. Of course, you have Bhutan, but Bhutan, people in Bhutan have never been outside their country, so they are nothing to compare with. Uh, it's usually the Nordic countries. It's usually the Nordic countries, because I, we have security, social security, but we also have all the freedoms. And that flexi security is the mix in the social uh, you know the former socialist society, they had security but no freedoms. You can say that in Americans they have all the freedoms but no security. So the Nordic model has been a good mix between capitalism and communism in that way, provided us the secu security, but also the, the freedoms to aspire to something better. Uh, but one of the key for the success of the Nordic model is actually the women's participation in social uh, life. And uh, now uh, you mentioned a very low number of Hungarian uh, member of parliaments. Uh, actually in uh, Norway is 40% and 60% men. And that is not the result of quotas. I think the uh, fact of quotas is very much exaggerated because uh, you can do very much without a quota. Uh, now we are forming a new government and the government, it, you know, no political party can form a government without 50% women. It's not a quota, it's just that it's not morally accepted any longer to have governments with, let's say, 80% men and 20% women. That was the case in the 60s. It's not the case now any longer. And these women are, of course, chosen because of the competence, not because of their gender. But they have been able to come into a position where they have, ha have been seen. And that's a key word for gender equality, to be seen. And then you're chosen. So, um, and uh, now if you also go in the public administration in the Nordic countries, uh, many of the high-level positions are uh, women, 
and then you wonder where are the men. Uh, well, the men move to sectors where the money is, and the money is not in the public sector. But but uh, women can be in public sector and in politics that gives them a lot of power because that is where the development of the society is decided. You will never have a good gender policy unless you have a huge number of women parliamentarians because they will put the gender issue on the political agenda. They will vote for, for laws that promotes uh, gender issues. They will vote for laws that ensures kindergarten for all the, an example, kindergarten for all the children so that their mother can work. They adopt the legislation that you can, uh, can have a, a paternity leave. Not In Norway, we don't only have maternity Paternity leave, but we also have a paternity leave, which the father has to take, and, and otherwise they lose it. And then the employer just have to comply. Uh, so that's why it's very important to have women in politics and public administration too, but also in business. But politics is very much a key issue, because you have to have a, uh, have a, some women politicians that are showing the way, actually.